I'm at the border crossing here in San Diego going into Mexico. Are we safe living in our RV full time? I want to share some safety tips and advice that Cherie and I have learned. I would not cross the border with my RV. Look at this. I'm Tom. And I'm Cherie. And this is enjoythejourney.life. Our channel is all about RV living and traveling full time. Over five years ago, I sold everything and I've been traveling full time ever since. And if you are brand new to our channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down there. That way you'll be notified when we release a brand new video. First off, Sheree and I are very saddened by the news to hear about our fellow RVers, James and Michelle that were boondocking near the border in Texas. They lost their lives. We do understand that the perpetrators are being brought to justice and our hearts do go out uh, to their friends and family. We also learned of a Mormon caravan that was attacked earlier this week and a number of people lost their lives. I'm bringing this up now because it's maybe a reminder to all of us on how to be safe Plus, we have gotten many comments on our channel, including this one I want to read specifically from Lena. She said, you went to Mexico for your dentist, and after hearing about the couple killed in Corpus Christi camping on the beach, and their truck and trailer was stolen and taken into Mexico, are you guys always with other campers, or do you camp alone? And I'm trying to tell my husband out there that it's still safe to RV. And so I wanted to answer this question, plus expand upon this right now. As I mentioned, we're very saddened by the news to hear about that couple and the other tragedies that have happened recently. But just one or two things happening like that doesn't mean that the entire safety for RVing out here has changed. And it's true, Sheree and I have gone into Mexico on a number of occasions. Typically, we do stay to touristy areas. Here you go for pasta, authentic Mexican. It's the best time I've ever had getting my teeth done. Cheers. There's, uh, most recently, uh, Los Algodones uh, near Yuma, Arizona. We crossed into Molar City, so they call it to get some dental work done. We have been to Cancun and Cozumel. And I have also crossed the border uh, right here near Tijuana to do some uh, volunteer work building houses in Mexico. Now that our safety has been brought top of mind, down here by the border or traveling anywhere now that doesn't mean we're not safe out here if we do take some precautions and i would not cross the border with my rv and travel solo to certain areas i would stick more to the touristy areas where there's a higher police presence or certainly go with a caravan sheree and i don't have any plans to go back into mexico and do any rving we certainly wouldn't hesitate to go into some of the touristy areas where we definitely do feel safe people are being murdered every day and just because that happens doesn't mean we stay in our home and we don't go anywhere well there's car accidents every day that kill people yet we still drive our cars to work or vacations or whatever so just because one or two bad situations have happened doesn't mean the entire landscape has changed and I wouldn't live in fear if you're gonna choose to travel don't fear about the situations you're getting to. Be very aware of what you're doing, but don't be afraid. And after all, our channel is about enjoying the journey, and we want you guys to enjoy your journey and not be afraid to get out here and enjoy all there is to offer in our beautiful country, plus the other countries that are out here. Now I wanna share some safety tips and advice that Cherie and I have learned 
over the years traveling full time in our RV. And this is certainly not the entire list. And this is just my opinion. So if you have a differing opinion or some other advice that would help to increase the safety of our RVing and travel community out here, please do share them in the comments. We appreciate that because our goal is that everyone travels safe out there and that we don't have any more unfortunate incidences like the ones we talked about. So first off, be mindful when you're traveling. Uh, kind of have an idea of where you do plan to stay for the night and is it safe? You know, sometimes you get to an area, whether it's a parking lot or a campground, whatever that looks like, and you just don't get a good vibe about the place. You need to trust that feeling. Cherie and I have done that on many occasions, and we've just moved on to what we felt like was a more safe situation. And Cherie and I have been very safe on the road and the only time we had any incidents of anything bad happening is when the Prius was broke into right here in San Diego and that did not involve the RV at all. You may want to have some protection and there's pros and cons on both sides of having guns. If you want to have a gun Definitely look into the local laws about having that and traveling with that, especially around conceal and carry. And make sure you get some training on how to use and handle the gun. And are you willing to use that gun to protect yourself or your loved ones? Because that is a really, really big decision. Now, if you're not into guns, there are a lot of other alternatives. Now there's tasers, which I believe in some places the uh, local laws do regulate those, but you can uh, order those online. Plus there's pepper spray that comes in many different sizes. I know Cherie carries several of those that are very uh, easy to carry and actually like a keychain. Uh, so that's a really simple one to get. And uh, some people use bear spray instead of pepper spray because they can't get pepper spray uh, where they are. I hear Canadians have a hard time getting that. We do carry that, uh, of course, when we do go out hiking, but that can also double as protection. And if you want some simple things, uh, we read online that a lot of people recommend wasp spray because it's not regulated and it's very accurate to like 30 feet and will disable someone. And even just like chlorine in a plastic spray bottle could be an easy way, or some other chemical, maybe bleach. Anything that would disorient an attacker and give you time to get away if you ran into that situation. Change your RV locks, especially if you have an older RV. Uh, many of the older RVs have one universal lock and that is the same across all kinds of RVs and anyone with that key might potentially be able to get into your RV. Now that's different uh, in some of the newer RVs, but if you bought used, it could be that somebody else has copies of the key to get in that and better be safe than sorry, change them out anyway. They're not that expensive. We're actually working with a company called RV Locks uh, to put in uh, keyless entry locks, which we are looking forward to putting out an install video on that. And we'll link to them below in the description. That's something to definitely check out. Have a big dog. That might be one of the easiest ways to have some extra security. The bigger the dog, the better. People are definitely intimidated by a large dog. So consider doing that. We also heard of a more high tech way or maybe it's a low tech way of making people think you have a dog by maybe putting a sticker on your RV that says beware of dog or attack dog inside or something like that. Also, some people have recorded dog a dog barking and then have played it randomly through their outside speakers. And that 
is also an interesting way to potentially deter someone away from you and your RV. Have an RV security system. For example, the Ring security system is one that we have ordered and look forward to installing on our new RV. And I want to thank Chad and Tara from Changing Lanes for the idea for that, plus their install video. We will link to that below in the description as well. And a good security system like the Ring system will help protect your RV when you're there, but also when you're not there. And even if you don't have a security system, you can buy stickers that say uh, RV under surveillance or something like that or make up one. Just something to give a little bit of a deterrent to make someone think twice before trying to get in to your RV. Do more camping together as a caravan or with other people and maybe less solo boondocking. Chances are if you're in a group, you're gonna be less of a target. Maybe don't do that uh, boondocking out in the middle of nowhere unless you are with other people or you have some guests along and maybe stick more to the RV parks and campgrounds. And we got these ideas online as well. Put extra chairs outside your camper. Maybe you are solo, but put an extra couple chairs out there. And here's another one. Put a couple pairs of men's boots out as well that make other people think that you're not alone and may have a pretty, a couple of big guys around just in case. And here's another one. Use more signage and stickers that suggest several things. First off, you don't want people to think that you are full time. So maybe not the name of your YouTube channel or your website or social media saying happy to be full time camping for five years or something along that line. Maybe something more of like happy weekend warrior, for example. You know, just as an idea, you want people to think you're only out there for a short amount of time and that you don't have all of your worldly possessions inside your RV. Also, if you are a veteran and you've got some appropriate stickers that you can put on the outside of your RV, do that. If you support veterans, which I hope you do, make sure you put those stickers on the outside as well. Anything that might suggest that you might be carrying a weapon of some kind. Maybe not like my RV is protected with Smith & Wesson like that. Not anything too potentially threatening like that because you don't want to invite someone looking for a fight, but something that would act as a deterrent. As one article pointed out that if you say something like you are carrying for sure, that if you do run into crossing a border or something or dealing with uh, police in some matter that it might put you under a little more scrutiny. I know one reason some RVers choose a van or a class A, B or C is that they don't actually have to be outside to get back into their vehicle. That if they see a bad situation out a window or something like that, they can simply get up in the driver's seat and then just drive off. Now, we don't have that and anybody else uh, in a fifth wheel uh, or travel trailer is not gonna have that, but if you haven't purchased your RV yet, you may want to consider that because I have heard that brought up on a number of occasions. Maybe look into some self-defense lessons. There are many of them that are low cost, maybe some kind of martial arts but basic self-defense just in case we have heard that recommended as well and don't check in on social media especially publicly that you're in a certain area for example you're maybe out in the national forest boondocking then you check in publicly on facebook for example to let everybody know that's where you are right then and there doing that probably not the safest thing to do. Save that post for when you're driving away, then you can check in as you're leaving. Now, this was just a few tips 
that we're sharing with this video. There are many others out there, and my hope is that if you know of others or disagree with any of these, you will comment down below, and let's make this video uh, a video that people can check out later and use as a resource to stay safe on the road. If you're brand new to our channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ding that little bell. That way you're gonna get notified when we release a brand new video. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And we appreciate it if you would share it with your other RV friends so again, we can keep our entire community more safe. So thanks again for watching and so long from the border in San Diego, California. Is it still safe to go? <laughs> Good night. Now that our... And even if you don't have a... There's another car being broke into. And even if you don't have an RV... I think he's doing that on purpose. And you can check out our next video right here.